in my opinion, track cycling is the best form of cycling, hey Alex? I kind of disagree. I quite like having gears on my bike, I quite like having brakes, but I, I guess it could be cool. Too right, it's pretty cool. It's full of speed, excitement, adrenaline. The buzz you get from riding on those steep bankings is insane. And today, I want to show you how you can get into track cycling because I know you're gonna love it. First job is to find a velodrome. When you head inside, these tend to look a little bit like a Pringle and they range in length from 200 meters up to around 400 meters. This is an Olympic sized velodrome, so it's 250 meters long and it's typically located indoors. There are of course outdoor velodromes, which are a little bit longer in length and don't feature the same steep bankings that we've got here. Talking of which, what's the reason for those super steep bankings? If a rider was to ride round a flat circular track, they would find it very hard to stay on the track, especially at high speeds, and it would be near impossible to actually turn around the corner. The steep banking of the track creates a centripetal force pushing the riders inwards, allowing the riders to hit really high speeds while staying on the track. Anyway, back to the search for our velodrome. In the UK, we're fortunate enough to have five Olympic-sized indoor velodromes. And we have just over 20 outdoor velodromes. And outdoor velodromes are a great place to start if you're new to track cycling. A quick search online and you will find your nearest velodrome. At most velodromes, you'll be able to book a taster session. So this is usually where you can hire a bike, like I've done here today, and then you'll have a coach or instructor that is able to guide you around the track, keep you nice and safe, and give you the confidence to come from here up onto the track. Don't bring your road bike to the track session and expect to use it. Track bikes are very different to road bikes. Yours is cool as well, isn't it? It's pretty cool, isn't yeah. it? Track bikes are amongst the simplest types of bikes available, with no brakes and a single fixed gear, meaning riders cannot freewheel. Some pro riders can actually reach speeds of up to 60 kilometers per hour, so the absence of brakes is vital to prevent crashes, as riders are able to ride closely together at high speeds without the worry of someone ahead suddenly slamming on the brakes. Track bikes have just one gear, and choosing that will depend on how fast you're going to ride and also your personal preference. A bigger gear will result in a slower cadence and a smaller gear will result in a faster cadence. Choosing the right size gear could be the difference between winning or losing a race, but you don't need to worry about that. So what do you need to take to your track session? First off, cycling kit is a good idea. You don't need any fancy skin suits, shorts and jersey will do fine, or whatever you prefer to ride in. Crucially, you're also gonna to need to take your cycling helmet. You won't be going far without that. Also, particularly handy to have is a set of cycling glasses. These could be clear or have a tinted lens as well. And these will just keep the wind out of your eyes as you're cycling around. Another thing is cycling shoes. Now, you can bring your own cycling shoes and pedals to put on the higher bike. They don't sometimes let you change the pedals, so be prepared to use either the shoes that they provide or bring your own trainers. During your taster session, you're gonna be doing plenty of cycling, so it's a good idea to bring some water with you and also some snacks, such as a, a banana or an energy bar, because you're gonna be burning lots of calories off. I also like to bring my sliders with me to the track session or some trainers to walk around in when you're not on the bike, because walking around in cycling shoes yeah it can end up in an accident like i've just found out but we won't talk about that you could also bring um, a towel as well if you get a bit sweaty because track cycling is hard work once you've arrived at the velodrome the coach will talk you through step by step of what you're going to be doing in the session but the trickiest bit will be getting on and off the track so we're going to talk you through what to expect First up, you're going to want to make sure your bike is set up correctly. So you want to get your right pedals on for you, get your saddle height right, and make sure you can reach the bars. After you've got everything set up correctly, it's worth having a little ride round in the track centre to make sure everything is set up correctly and get used to how to come to a stop on the bike. Once you're comfortable on the bike, it's time to hit the track. You ready, Alex? Oh yeah, come on. Let's go. When you first arrive at the track, it can seem a little bit scary. Big steep bankings with all these different colour lines. But what do they all mean? Well, this very bottom bit of the track, this is your safety zone. This is where you will get on your bike and set off onto the track and often where officials and coaches will stand when you're racing to give instructions. Then you have the light blue part of the track. Now, this is called the Cote de Jour and this acts as an access point onto the actual track and as a little bit of a safety zone if you do slip off the actual track, you can hit the coach's jaw and not slip off. Whereas if you hit the safety zone, 
it's quite slippery. After the painted surface of the Cote de Jure, we've got this, our main area of the track, which is used for racing. First up down here, we've got the black line, which is the datum line. This is where the measurement is actually taken to get the distance of our velodrome. So this is 250 meters. Further up here, we've got the red line, which is known as the sprinter's line. And then further up still, we've got the blue line referred to as the stayer's line. And that's where you'll quite often find bunch races going around and is a good point for people to ride around regularly on. So you're gonna make your way out of the track center onto this safety zone of the track. And the first thing you're gonna need to do is to check to your right to make sure there's no riders already using this area otherwise you run the risk of crashing into them. So on the safety zone, you can go at a brisk walking pace to get yourself comfortable and confident on the bike before heading towards the Cote de Jure. Once you've got your bearings on the safety zone, you can then move on to the Cote de Jure. So you want to check if the track is clear just by a quick look over your shoulder to make sure you're not going to collide with anybody. Then just simply ride onto the Cote de Jure in the straight and start building up your speed to around 15 miles per hour. Once you've built up enough speed on the Cote de Jour, you can then start to make your way onto the main track. And we're going to start off on the black line. So you want to hit the black line in the straights. So try and just hold the black line for just a straight. And then you can dip back down in the corner onto the Cote de Jour. And then eventually, as you build up more confidence, you'll be able to hold the black line all the way around the track. Once you're confident in the black line, you can then move up to the red line and the blue line. And before you know it, you'll be riding right at the top of the track, having a whale of a time. So you've been riding around on the track, you've built your confidence up, you've done lap after lap after lap, but eventually you're gonna tire yourself out and you're gonna need to know how to get from the main part of the track down to the safety of the track center without causing any problems and having any stress whatsoever. Yeah, well, one thing not to do is don't stop pedaling because it will not end well. Your back wheel will flip up in the air and you're probably going to crash. So what you need to do, let everybody know that you're going to come off the track, have a look over your shoulder and start moving down the track. You can slowly move down to the black line and then you want to reduce your pedaling, reduce the pressure that you're applying in the pedals and you're going to slowly slow down. Once you've built down to around 15 miles per hour, you can then move on to the Cote de Jour. When you're at the Cote de Jour, you can need to regulate your speed even further. So you can allow yourself a lap or so just to regulate those speeds down to almost to that brisk walking pace that we were transitioning from the safety zone onto the coach zone. So it's a case of reversing that process. As always, we're moving onto the track, moving off, we tend to do it on the straights of the velodrome because that's the safest place to do. So to get from here onto the main safety zone of the track, a quick glance over your left shoulder to make sure it's nice and safe. When you're at that walking pace, you can move on the straight onto the main safety zone and make your way back into the track center. So there you have it. There's a little explainer on what to expect when you first go to a velodrome. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, please do give it a big thumbs up and why not let us know in the comments section down below if this has inspired you to find your local velodrome and give track a go for the first time. I really hope it has. You're going to love it. I've had a good time. Good. I'm glad. If you have enjoyed this video and you are interested in track cycling, then make sure you check out the brand new Track Champions League, a new exciting format featuring five events across four countries, starting on November the 6th in Mallorca. You can catch all the action on GCN+.